Hey folks, happy Thursday to you. It's Thursday, June 10th, and we continue our FUMC CV devotional using our uh, prayer calendar today. We are reading uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 6. So if you haven't read that yet, hit pause right now, go and read that. It'll just take you a couple minutes, and then we'll come back. Uh, just on an aside, thank you for those who are watching um, every day, and you have been um, in prayer for my mother, you know that she had, she had surgery yesterday and came out of surgery fine. And a doctor said, uh, I believe it was successful. And so uh, we're hoping uh, for good results. She's really been having some pretty significant uh, pain and a femur that was previously broken. And they think that they found what the, the problem was and hopefully uh, brought some uh, relief to that uh, significant pain. So all right, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 6. I want to talk um, about two, uh, two things today. So um, some people, when they're reading these letters from Paul, especially 2 Corinthians, they uh, critique Paul a little bit as if he is like all over the place and seems a little sort of manic and in and out and, and high and low and, and uh, confused. Um, and that very well may be the case. Um, some very good and technical uh, research, researching the manuscripts, researching the order at which the manuscript, the original manuscripts were copied and where they were copied, going back, all of that kind of really good research also shows that um, a number of the letters, especially Second Corinthians, could be out of order um, that when they were being collected there were bits and pieces of it and so um, the collectors had to put the letters together like they know this is a second corinthians letter but remember there it's not on a computer hard drive it's a handwritten parchment uh, multiple pieces of this parchment and so uh, parts can get lost um, and so actually what what they believe is that if you were looking at your bible that um, Paul is talking in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, about uh, commending, uh, being commending ourselves and being commended by, by uh, uh, others. And then he goes uh, sort of off on a tangent. And then in chapter 5, verse 11, he comes back to that commending um, argument. Um, and it might be possible that he was talking about one thing, went off and talked about another thing and came back and, and uh, finished. And that's not an uncommon way to be in conversation. We do that all the time. Um, but we don't necessarily do that in writing all the time. Um, so what, what many scholars have suggested is that if you were reading chapter 3, 1 through 7, I mean 1 through 6, then you go over to chapter 5, verse 11, and continue, that that's actually the natural continuation of the passage. And try try reading it that way. It, it actually makes sense um, when, when you do that. So that's just fun, sort of, I, I love these um, sort of historical pieces about how the text works together. And, um, but what I want us to focus on today, uh, chapter 5, verse 6. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. So at home in the body, away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive the recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or or evil. Now, ancient uh, Greco-Roman philosophers um, saw a dualism between body and soul, um, and that body was earthly, and that soul was uh, of the spiritual or the the heavenly realm. That the body was bad, and that the soul was good. That the body was dark, and that the soul was light. Um, and there's actually conversation. Uh, it, you can actually, uh, one of the ways that they talked about death in those days is they would say that uh, someone escaped naked. And what they, what they meant by that was they escaped the body uh, 
and uh, now we're just completely soul. So you're soul and you're naked of the body. So you know how we say like, um, we might say that someone passed away or someone went to sleep um, and what we mean is that they died. Well, they would say that someone escaped naked um, and because their soul escaped their body. Now we have a little more integrated understanding of this body-soul dualism. I mean, certainly we understand that there are our body and soul are, are separate, they're different. Um, but we wouldn't say that everything of the body is bad um, and that, that the earth, the body, the natural world represents the negative um, away from the spiritual. We, we believe that the natural world is God's creation. Um, and so it can be good. Um, and we certainly, as humanity, we can use it for good. Um, but... It's also the place of sin, um, and it can be used for bad as well. So I just wanted you to think about that. So what, what does it mean to have this earthly vessel, and we have the um, opportunity every day to choose whether to use this earthly vessel for good or for bad? The Greco-Roman philosophers would say we, we didn't really have a choice, that the earthly vessel was all bad. No, we have a choice. You have a choice today to use your earthly vessel for good or for bad. What shall you choose? God bless. Have a great day.